Jesus.com. So let's read. It says, 1 John, as we close, 1 John 15 through 21. It says, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We know and have believed that the love which God has for us, God is love, and he who remains in him, in him loves, uh, remains in God, and God remains in him. And this love has been made perfect among us that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is even so we are in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has punishment he who has fear is not made complete in love we love him because he first loved us if a man says and here's the kicker guys if a man says i love god or i love jesus and hates his brother he is a liar for he who doesn't love his brother whom he has seen how can he love god whom he has not seen this commandment we have from him that he who loves God should also love his brother. So what was part of the covenant that Jesus made with the disciples at Passover? To love one another. New commandment I, I give to you to love one another. And so we just did this whole Bible study of tradition of how to have a party, how to honor your guests, how to exalt them, how to serve them, how to anoint them and wash them and feed them, entertain them, right? And so we think about it, well, if Jesus comes to dinner, this is what I would do for Jesus. Everything you think in your hearts and your minds and you said earlier that you would do for Jesus, if you're not doing it for each other, you're a bunch of liars. And you need to repent of it. Okay? And that's the facts. Because every if we can sit here and say, God, I love you. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I praise you. I worship you. But if you're not loving the body of Christ, mm-mm. Bible calls you a liar, calls me a liar. And so we have to put, hold on a second. We have to make sure we focus what we do in life and our relationships outwardly. There is a lot of being consumed or overwhelmed with our own personal lives in the world, in the church, and in this group. Where people are not still not getting on group me, still not sending texts to each other, still not being available for each other. So don't tell me all the things you would do for Jesus if you won't do it for each other. You are not making God and Jesus happy if you're not prioritizing one another over yourself. How many times? Well, that's just not me. That's not what I do. Who cares? That's how what we're given the spirit of self-control. Guess what Lance is? Lance is a sinner. Lance is not a saint. I'm a saint because Jesus made me one. But by my very nature, I am a sinner. But I can't go, well, that's the way I am. That's what I do. No, that doesn't work. What works is going by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lance becomes a new man. A new creation of Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. We do things differently now and I can never use an excuse of that's how I am. Or that's the way I am. Or that's just not me. Right. What a bunch of junk. And this group has grown and fallen apart and grown and fallen apart. And we're like in another phase of falling apart because people are so selfish. Everybody's consumed with their own problems in their own lives and their own things that's going on. And I can only do so much. Now imagine me, I'm trying to get my life and keep my life together and then I'm trying to help everybody I know in their lives keep their lives together and to help tackle their problems. That's how we all should be. I'm not the example, I'm following the example of Jesus. How many times did he have to go out and minister tired and worn out and hungry? But the scripture says he's had compassion on the people and all he wanted to do was get away and be with God. But nope, he didn't do that. He goes, no, the people need me. So nowhere in scripture, we, we talked about this in the sermon, the heart of God. And here we are doing it again because we still can't get it right. And now we have people leaving the group. I mean, I could sit here and I won't because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I could sit here and lay, and lay out every single one of your guys' problems. Why do I know this? Because I'm in your life. I pray with you. I talk with you. I try to encourage you. I can lay out every problem of the people that have left this group. And it's because I care. Now we can't say, and I can say, I can say, I, God, Jesus, I love you because I love your people. I'm giving all I can for your people. I'm not holding back. 
I'm not putting myself first. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I know for sure. Yeah, everyone in this group needs to check their heart. And ask himself, have I been consumed in my own life? Have I been overwhelmed with my own problems and issues and desires? Have I been seeking my own? If you say yes to any of that, repent. Believe me, if you keep focusing on your problems, they'll only magnify and get bigger. You need to get out of your head and start helping other people because all the gifts are God, of God are given to us to benefit the body. So how can you be benefiting the body if you're not intimately activated in equipping the body and helping the body? If you're not doing that, then the power of the Holy Spirit is not flowing through you and then you're drying up. You're becoming dry bones. Because you have to be serving people to have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to be serving people in order to have the fullness of the walk of Christ. How many people have their walks with God die because you're just so selfish and they sit there like a lump on a log and they think that's the Christian walk? You're not saved to serve yourself. You're saved to serve each other. We have to change. This, this ministry is literally on its last leg and dying. But don't worry. Everybody's going to sit home and think about themselves. And what good does that do for the body of Christ? Not a single thing. So I am asking everybody, pray about it. Check your hearts. Repent of it. Realize it's a, not an occasion. It's a lifestyle. It's not something we do to prove to God that we do one good thing a week. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's our life. Now, Jesus went through great measure to show this, these, these, these examples of respect and honoring his disciples and then also required them from those who invited him to his house, right? How should we treat each other? Bear one another's burdens. Confess your faults to one another, right? Build each other up. Call each other out. Bring each other back. Challenge one another, one another in the faith. But if I ever hear anybody ever say to me again, I'm going to lose it. Because it's like, oh, you know, it's just not me. It's not what I do. Who cares? I don't care. Change. Change, change. Change, 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 and change. Be like Jesus. You're not being saved to be like you. You're being saved to be like him. I, Man, I so want to just go to a mountain and live in the, alone. I so do. I promise you that. If I could move farther out, I would. But the problem is, is I can't do that even though I want to because people aren't there and I have to be here to serve people because that's what makes my God happy. And if you're not actively seeking out your day, how to make your God happy, then you are failing in your walk. Okay? And so if you want to have a good walk, if you want to get over the humps, if you want to have fire in your belly, if you want to have desire with Christ, if you want to feel close to God, you have to start serving each other. There is no way out of it. You have to serve one another. It doesn't mean you don't have personal time or things you can do for yourself. I'm just saying your life is serving each other. Your break is taking care of yourself. We, there's times to take care of yourself, but we have it so flip-flopped in the body of Christ right now that we treat the church like a movie theater. We're going to go get mine. I'm going to get entertained. I'm going to get a warm fuzzy, and I'm going to be a little heathen and run back out into the world and find other ways to be entertained and fulfilled. No, that's not the Christian way. The Christian way is to build in each other's lives and try to fulfill each other's lives. Marriage is no different. If my whole walk with my wife was trying to make myself happy and never looking out for her needs and just getting mine, how long do you think that marriage would last? She would get tired of being used. She would be hurt. Rightfully so. The body of Christ is no different. We have to understand that we're there to be there for the other person and not ourselves. To prefer one another. To build each other up. My wife and Angel are very upset that they feel like they're the only ones on group me. Because nobody else has the time. It's ridiculous. So I'm asking, if you love Jesus, love me. If you love Jesus, love each other. Don't tell me you love Jesus if you can't love the body of Christ. What you will not do for the body of Christ is what you won't do for Jesus. It's that simple. So if you're failing the body of Christ, you're failing Jesus. That is the truth. 
That is the absolute God's honest truth. You don't like that? Repent, change, ask for help, put in some effort. I promise you, your walk with God will become much livelier, much more fulfilled, and much more blessed. Don't try to point out the problems. Be the answer to the problem. Be what you want other people to be. Set the example. Someone has to. So, I believe everybody in this group loves Jesus. But I also believe everybody in this group, including myself, have has been a, a student of this world. And we have been taught certain things. And we have to unlearn them. We have to be untaught and learn new things. And let our hearts be changed and to be like Jesus, to love Jesus. Right? Now when he comes back, what did he say And when the sheep and the goats? When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Right. So when he comes back and he goes, hey, so-and-so in this group, did you love the body of Christ? What are you going to say? Well, no, not really. I was busy. You know, I went on vacation. I had so much problems going on in my life. I couldn't take a second to look my head up and look around and see that other people are hurting worse than I'm hurting. Right? It's wrong. We need to repent. So if you love Jesus, if you're inviting Jesus for dinner, just realize you're invited the entire body of Christ with you. And that that same honor, that same love, that same respect you give Jesus is what you have to give the body of Christ. Failure to do so is not only hurting the body, it's hurting Jesus and it's hurting you because you were not built for selfishness. You were built to be machines and operators of love. BrotherLamps.com